everyone. I am currently getting set up, so it will be just a few minutes and we'll get started with the presentation. So for those of you joining us, I will go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Sam from Thermo Cosplay. I have been a cosplayer for six years. I have won over six awards um, for cosplay performance and creation and fabrication. Um, and I enjoy doing a lot of special effects, makeup, um, pro prosthetics, um, unusual looks <laughs> as it were. Uh, you'll see some photos of myself in here and some of my friends as I work with fellow uh, craftsmen. So I will be explaining some of the options available to individuals from a special effects makeup perspective. This will be a one-on-one, -on -one, so we're going to go through a lot of the basics. And um, if you have any questions, please post them in the YouTube chat. As I do not have access to Discord right now and therefore I cannot answer anything on Discord. However, I can look at YouTube and I can answer those questions for you there. Um, so let me check this YouTube stream right here. It looks like it's going pretty good. I see myself and everything. Okay, so I'd say we're, we're all set up to move forward. All right, um, this is special effects makeup for cosplay. Again, introductions, six cosplay awards. I've made over 50 costumes for myself and others. And I have been sponsored by the Warbler Company, Cosplay Supplies, and even Wonderflex World in the past. And I am currently sponsored by the Cosplay Pros, which is an Arizona-based company that uh, focuses on cosplay materials, or as I like to call them, cos materials. Um, so these images here are examples of prosthetics. Um, the leku, which are the head tentacles and earbuds on this particular outfit, were made by Twi'lek Pam, and they are a silicone um, prosthetic, so we'll go over that in the future. Uh, the breasts here are also silicone and not real, and made by um, a company that was formerly known as Boobs for Boys, and I am not sure what they were renaming themselves. Uh, the makeup here to make me look aged and scarred was done by myself and used I used rigid collodion which we'll discuss and then I actually made this silicone mask here and I'll kind of go through some of the information on that in the future as well but a lot of this is going to start very basic very simple very easy so if you have questions or if I'm moving too fast please let me know I am an excitable person and this is entirely possible okay so I will move forward. All right, the agenda. You need to know what we're talking about. That's very important. So we're going to talk about powders and tights. Um, we're going to go over how they can be useful, how they're a great starter tool, and how even advanced special effects makeup users still use them because they're simple and they're washable. <laughs> Uh, then we'll move on to creaming grease paints, um, where to find them, where you typically see them applied, how to use them, and their pros and cons. We'll go to water-based, um, the application methods for that, alcohol-based, its application methods, and how uh, finicky it can be, or how useful it can be. Sponge versus uh, sponge and brush versus airbrush applications. That's actually very important to determine how you're going to apply your makeup for its longevity. Then we'll discuss some of the basics with liquid latex and rigid collodion, things that you can find pretty much anywhere. And move on to latex-free foams and silicones, things that are a bit more difficult to locate, things that you have to go to um, special supply shops for. Uh, finally, we'll talk about pre-made fabrications versus ones that you make yourself. And then we'll have even more room for questions. So there will be plenty of space in this particular panel to ask questions about special effects makeup. Um, we are going to start basic and get a little bit more advanced and then we will also talk about what makes a special effects, special effects prosthetic. You, you, you might see all these little evolutions here, 
Um, their ears are technically considered a, you know, a special effects prosthetic because each of them are made in a different way. Some of them are permanently attached to the head, some of them to the wig, some of them are actually integrated into the face. So we'll, we'll move on and, and kind of go into more of that detail later. So we talked about powders and tights. Now, the thing with tights that I like to mention is you need to have a really high grade tight to make sure that it covers your own skin tone. Not everybody's going to be super pale like I am, which is sad state of affairs. Um, but when you're pale, it's easier to cover up your skin tone because typically you have a neutral palette to work with. However, if you're not as pale or you have more of a pink to your skin or more of a yellow or maybe you're a darker color skin tone um, or you have like, you know, kind of a, I mean, anything from bronze, just anything that is outside of basically sheet white, <laughs> then you're going to have to make some changes. So on the left, there's a Twi'lek, which is an alien from Star Wars. And um, what they do is... Um, to make sure I achieved the proper match between the Leku and the uh, tights for this, what I did is I actually got white pairs of tights for my arms and for my legs. Um, and I put those on first. Then I bought a pair of mint colored tights and pulled them over the white tights. So the white tights made sure that my skin tone was completely neutral and devoid of color. And so that the mint color of the tights was much, much brighter and much more interesting. Um, say you don't want to paint your upper body. Uh, I put on a mesh shirt and to hide some of the seam lines from the tights, I cut little holes in the feet and I made sure I had um, like a kind of fabric glue. Sorry, my dog is barking. I made sure I had a fabric glue that would keep it from uh, fraying too much. It's called fray check. And I cut a hole in the neck too, um, technically the crotch of the tights, and I pulled my head through that and basically put it on like a little mini t-shirt um, and did the two layers there. Now you don't have to do this. You could honestly powder your entire body, but that takes a really long time. So tights are great for a quick solution, especially if you're in a hot, arid environment like I am. I live in Arizona, and so it gets really warm here in the summer. And makeup very easily melts off of us. So we like to use tights as a way to make sure that our colorful aliens look the way that they started in the morning, all throughout the day. <laughs> um, another cool thing that you can do with powders is in the middle picture here, you'll notice that I kind of have this very scaly effect. This was achieved very simply. I took a pair of fishnets, pulled them over my face, and then started just dusting eyeshadow powder onto myself. And once I was finished with the colors that I wanted, I sealed it with a quick um, seal spray. I like to use Ben Nye's Matte Sealant, but there's lots of different setting sprays for makeup that you can use. I suggest setting the makeup before you take the tights back off the, the fishnet so that you don't accidentally pull away too much of the makeup when you're removing them. But it creates this really interesting, nice blended effect so that the scales look like they go into my skin instead of looking like I drew them on. Um, and it, it's very subtle and it's still very pretty. So powder can be used for a lot of different things. Um, you can, like I said, use powder for the body. You can tell here that my friend on the right, who's a pink Twi'lek, we painted her face, but we put more powder on her neck just because she knew that she was going to be sweating a lot. So there is a color difference here, but at least you're getting that color, right? You're, you're very close. Whereas if we had used the same colored paint all the way through, then um, she would have been the same bright pink that you see down here at the bottom. Um, this is difficult to achieve over time, but powders and tights are pretty inexpensive. Um, some of the, um, oh, quiet computer, sorry. <laughs> some of the best tights to use are dance tights because they're very opaque. They can take a beating and typically if you accidentally fit, forget to throw them or you accidentally forget to throw them in your like delicate cycle and you toss them in the washer, they survive. Um, the only problem with dance tights is they typically come in a very small amount of colors. Um, so if you want to stick to something inexpensive, you can buy cheap tights, just know you're going to need to layer them. You'll need to put a white down or a pink down depending on what color you're trying to achieve and then pull your color up over it. Now there is an expensive option that is just as durable as dance tights, if not more, 
and you can wash and wear them for a very long time. There is a company called We Love Colors and they actually make tights specifically for cosplay and they make them in colors of current makeup styles so they actually match industry makeup um, palettes so you can get your exact color. Um, so I'm going to pause for a moment. If you have any questions about powders and tights, please let me know. I know that I move pretty quick, but this is a very simple subject and so I want to move along for the more advanced ones. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna just move it along to the next slide. All right, our next slide. Cream and grease makeup. You might recognize these pictures here. You're probably going, hmm, I see this all the time. Oh, I have really quick before I move on. Um, my go-to brand for powder, um, as far as that, I'd like, I prefer Bin Nye or Graftobian. However, they're very expensive makeup powders and I wear makeup for costumes quite a bit. So honestly, if you can get a large makeup palette from Walmart or Walgreens or your local pharmacy, um, any sort of um, makeup counter and find a large eyeshadow palette that your skin does not react to, that works just fine. Just make sure that it's a very vibrant, opaque eyeshadow palette. Um, and you'll want it to be like a large circular palette is what I'm thinking. Um, and I like to test makeup on the underside of my forearm and wear it around the house to make sure I don't have any reactions to it before I actually put it on the rest of my body. Um, makeup reactions are common and it's better to taste it, test it on an area where you can wash it away quickly like the underside of your arm than to put it on your whole body, have a breakout of hives and freak out. <laughs> so for the question was, what is your go-to brand for powder? My go-to brand for powder is any any eyeshadow palette that you love and that is large enough for you to get a big brush into and start dusting yourself with. Which, honestly, these days, they're starting to sell bulk eyeshadow colors, so it's magic. <laughs> All right, now there's cream and grease makeup. This is commonly seen during Halloween. You'll find it in like dollar stores and thrift stores and grocery stores. You will basically find it anywhere. <laughs> Anywhere that the light touches, <laughs> this makeup can be found. Uh, um, the pro <coughs> Sorry, I need some water. Hang on a second. There we go. The problem with this makeup is it transfers to everything. There really isn't a way to set cream and grease makeup because they're made from cream and grease, so they're meant to blend well. So they are the easiest makeups to blend. You can take the primary colors and make magic on your face. You can turn into an alien or a sugar skull or become the most beautiful woman or man in the world. It's really, really easy to start with. You just need a sponge and or your own fingers and you just go to work. You have to you know, kind of have an idea for color theory or a little bit of practice. But in general, this is the easiest makeup type to learn. So that's why it's the most readily available. It's also very inexpensive to produce and it has the widest color range. As a cosplayer though, if you're going to a convention or an event or a photo shoot, or maybe you're just driving somewhere in your costume because you have to commute to your event, you will find that you have left bits of your makeup in your car, on your costume, on your friends, on your wallet or your purse. Again, this transfers everywhere. Um, a good way to keep it from transferring a lot is to powder it. I like to use an HD setting powder. My favorite is by um, ELF, which is Eye, Eyes, Lips, Face. But any HD, it needs to be high definition setting powder. I say HD because it's a very fine powder specifically made to settle into the grooves and cracks of your skin. And that means it's going to settle into the grooves and cracks and pores of that cream and grease makeup and hopefully help it set up more. Now, any areas that see high friction, like your hands, your wrists, um, your armpits, your waist, anything that moves a lot like your neck, you will not keep this makeup on it for very long. So you will need to reapply during your event or photo shoot. 
but if you need a quick solution and you need a lot of color, this is a great place to go to. Um, for instance, um, all of this makeup on this window right here, all of it probably only costs 20 bucks. Whereas if I was to buy a tube size blue and a different makeup, it would be $25 for just one tube. So this is much, much cheaper. Yeah, the HD setting powder for everyday makeup is also amazing because again, it's made to fill the pores that are left over that from, from your foundation or meant to settle the color of your skin and it's amazing. <laughs> but again, any high definition setting powder will work. You can try a setting spray. Do not apply a setting spray directly to cream or grease, grease makeup. It will make it more watery mushy. I'm not really sure how to describe it. It will just start melting. Um, so applying powder first and then a setting spray again helps with its longevity and decreases transfer, but there's no way to really permanently stop transfer from this makeup. And that's just because of the way that it's made for blending so that you have a vast array of, of um, uh, seamless appearances basically. Um, it does come in little palettes that you can apply with a brush or a sponge. It comes in little tubes like you see, and it comes in basically like crayons, squishy crayons, <laughs> very squishy. <laughs> but this is a good starting point for somebody who wants to learn how to do special effects looks or who wants to learn how to be an alien, or maybe you want to learn how to be one of the characters from um, My Hero Academia this would be a good place to start to learn how to apply the makeup before you use your more expensive makeups. So you want to do a test run? Here you go. It'll, it'll create a map or a template for you that you can use and determine how in the future to apply it with makeup that will last longer. So I will pause again for questions. And I'm going to move to the next slide where we're pausing for questions about cream and grease. Okay, take a drink of water and then we'll move on. Okay, take a breath. Breathe in, breathe out. Okay, oh, how can you get an opaque look? So I'll move back real quick to this. So for an opaque look, you have to do layers. Um, lots and lots of layers. Um, a lot of people, when they apply it, they take a sponge and they wipe across their face. Do not wipe across your face. Make sure your, one, your sponge is slightly moist, not completely wet, like just have like, run it underneath the sink for water and then squeeze it out so it's slightly damp. And then swipe as much makeup as you can off of the pot or the palette. And then instead of swiping it across your face, um, like you swipe your phone, <laughs> pat it on your face, which is called stippling. So pat it onto your face in layers and let the layers dry for five to 10 minutes um, in between. This will allow it to actually settle into your skin. And that way, when you come and apply a second layer, you're not lifting up the previous makeup. A lot of people too, they like to just swipe and the swiping is really what takes off makeup when you're, when you're patting it on. Um, essentially, most of us are taught to put on foundation and then blend aggressively. With grease makeups and most other makeups, you cannot be overly aggressive. You have to be very gentle. And so patting it on in layers and letting it settle into the skin, kind of like an oil, really is the best way to do it. Okay, so we've got a lot of ground to cover because I know a little too much about this stuff. Um, <laughs> but we'll go ahead and, uh, you're welcome, um, and we'll go ahead and talk about water-based makeup. Water-based makeup is the most common makeup. Again, you're going to see this also at Halloween stores, and it will specifically say water-based, and it usually has something that says water-activated. 
that's how you know it's water-based makeup. You can find pretty much any color on the spectrum. This can be mixed with other paint colors and you can make new hues and new shades just like you do with cream and grease paint. The beauty of water-based makeup though is you can apply a primer to your face first like you do normally for makeup, let it settle into your skin for 10 to 15 minutes, and then as you pat on layers of the water-based makeup and let it settle, I, like I said, you pat it on very gently, you can use a brush to stipple it on, or you can use a sponge. You can also use an airbrush. We'll talk about all that later though. Application methods are a little bit different. Um, but for water-based, as you pat it on and you wait 10 minutes between layers, just basically wait until the color does not look wet anymore and it doesn't feel tacky before you apply a second coat. Um, this one has a, a lot of versatility. You can blend it really well. You can add lots of colors. Um, you can make it look faded in some areas and darker in others. Um, you can add striations to it by just taking a little Q-tip with some water and quickly peeling it away. Um, or you can, you know, brush on more. It basically, water-based makeup will emulate whatever application method you're using. And it is the easiest to mix. You can get it in little water-activated palettes. You can get it in little tubes and bottles, pre-watered. And the airbrush water-based paints, you don't have to airbrush them either. You can always take them and take them with um, an airbrush activator and mix them into a little bowl and apply it with a sponge or a makeup brush. So there's lots of different ways to use water-based makeup. Um, it's honestly the best, personally, if you can get a way to set it fully, it's the easiest to wear. It's the least one, um, people react to it the least, and uh, it's typically the safest. And also is tested the most, <laughs> and there's a lot of brands, which means you've got anything from $2 a bottle to 35 So there's just lots of different pigment variations and companies who sell this. I personally like to get my water-based makeup, makeup from um, uh, Ben Nye or uh, Meron um, or Endura just because they they're, um, they don't test on creatures and they are skin safe and they're just kind of more eco-friendly companies. Um, but water-based is just a lot of fun to work with. Um, let's see here. I mean, we went over the colors and uh, the, oh yeah, for, for setting this, uh, you, you can spray. After applying it, you can spray directly onto it. I suggest using an alcohol-based setting spray just because that will strengthen the water-based paint, but you don't have to. You can use a water-based setting spray. Um, you can powder it. You can put eyeshadow over the top of it and blush and other things, and typically it's pretty durable. Um, this does suffer from the same problem that every other makeup suffers from. Anywhere where you've got high friction, like your neck or your shoulders or your waist, anything where you're wearing clothing that might be rubbing on it, you will have some um, transfer or you will have some of the makeup um, peel off. However, it washes right out of clothing and it comes out very easily. And typically it doesn't transfer to other people's skin. So it's a really, really good makeup option and variety. Um, yeah. So I'll pause again, but yeah, water-based is, all of these have water-based. So the Kratos, the skin and the tattoo were all water-based makeup. I went darker in my hair so that the red would be more visible, but on the video game itself, the side of his head is darker. And then as it gets closer to his eyebrow, it gets lighter a little bit, kind of like sun faded. So that's where you can kind of emulate a drawing on your skin with water-based paint. It's really fun. Um, for this, I use water-based paint for my lips and for the little dots and to make my skin look even more pale. And then I also use water-based paints to enhance the cell shading for the, the image on the far left or right or however you're looking at this. Basically, Nisha, all of these have water-based paints of some kind on them. And these are kind of the brands that I think are the best. Uh, there's European Body Art, there's Nazaru, and there's Meron. Uh, Meron has a vast array of hues. Um, they are the highest tested, 
the longest lasting and they come in palettes, um, aqua color palettes, or they come in bottles like that. And honestly, they have a longer shelf life than some of the other brands too. Speaking of, after using your water-based makeup, please wipe it down with a disinfecting cloth or a makeup cloth or just use a little bit of soap and water to wipe down the top of it and leave it open, let it air out completely. Do not close your water-based makeups up until they fully dried out. If they're um, like this middle palette, if they're one of those little pots or if they're a palette that's water activated, you need to make sure that the top of it is completely dry before you seal it up because mold will grow in there if you don't. If it's a water-based bottle like this, it's okay. You just seal it right back up after using it, but the palettes have to dry. That's why they call them a cake or a pot because they need to sit in their little pot and dry out before you can use them again. Um, I, I have a friend that did not listen to me and we went to do their makeup one time and I opened it and I was like, I thought you said that you were bringing blue and the whole top of it was green. It was because little trees were growing out of it. <laughs> so it was fun. <laughs> Okay, please ask questions as, as we go. If we have anything, I can always go back. Um, Alcohol-based paints. They are, I'm gonna be honest and straightforward, they're pain in the ass, but <laughs> they're worth it. Um, typically, the best way to apply alcohol-based paints is with an airbrush. Uh, you can apply with a sponge or a brush, but you will, no matter what, end up with splotchy kind of looking areas because alcohol paints are meant to be translucent. So they're meant to emulate skin texture more than any other paint. And that means since they are so translucent that your brush and sponge are sucking up all of the paint and taking it away from the skin. Whereas an airbrush is just spitting it right onto your body and be like, stay there. <laughs> um, these are again, Twi'leks from Star Wars. We really like being Twi'leks, um, Star Wars is awesome. On the left is my friend Amber Bright Props and her Laku are made from latex-free foam. She has adhered them to her head using a medical grade adhesive called Prosade. Um, we'll discuss adhesives more, but Prosade's my favorite. This paint that we used for her, I believe is the, uh, I think it's Endura and Red. Um, and mine on the right is Endura and Light Blue. Endura, which is European body art, is a silicone suspended alcohol based airbrush paint, which means this stuff does not come off your body easy. Like once you've applied it, unless you've put a primer under your skin to act as a barrier, it will take you some time to take off this paint. Once you've applied this, you don't even really have to seal it. I like to seal it because alcohol paint does stay a little tacky without some powder. So I like to seal it with um, one to two spray coats of the Bin Nye alcohol activated sealer. And then I do one little light dusting of the HD, uh, HD finishing powder just to make sure that everything looks nice and smooth. And then you're set. Um, my friend on the left, for instance, did a blue Twi'lek and wore the same makeup for two days. She even showered in it. She was just careful to not scrub very hard and she had to very lightly reapply but this stuff stays on really the only way to remove it is to either soak your skin in coconut oil and allow it to slowly peel off or i mean not peel off but slowly rub it off very gently with coconut oil or there is a special paint a uh, special um oh gosh soap that's the word i'm looking for there's a special soap that is made to remove alcohol-based paints. I believe it is made by Real Creations. And Real Creations is another alcohol-based um, airbrush paint that you can use. Uh, there are quite a few options, Pro Air, Endura, Wolf Face Art FX, Real Creations. They all vary in price. This is the most expensive type of um, body paint. It, um, one bottle of Endura, for instance, ranges from $12 to $25, and that's typically only about one to four ounces. 
Um, the Wolf Face Art Effects Essentials Palette is an alcohol-activated um, palette, so it is like a pot. And what you have to do is get 99% alcohol and uh, use it in like a little brush bowl and activate it. This is one of the few that you can actually brush onto your body successfully um, because it's kind of made to emulate water-based paint but used with an alco alcohol activator. Pro Air is um, the least expensive. It's a hybrid model. It's not too bad, um, but it doesn't come in as many colors and it does have a bit more transfer. It, a bit more, bit more of an issue with transfer. Um, let's see here. Alcohol-based paints. I think. I think I've covered everything from powder to cream and grease, water, and alcohol-based paints. And anytime you see hybrid in most alcohol-based paints or water-based paints, the hybrid typically means it has some kind of silicone in it. And the silico silicone's meant to one increase the shelf life of the product and two, allow it to remain flexible on your face or body because skin moves and some of these paints they discovered over time would crack so adding silicone or some kind of a moisturized um, rubberized product made sure it actually stretched with your body. I like the Wolf Face Art FX Essentials for detail work and then I like the airbrush paints for like full body application. Again, I'm not overly fond of wearing makeup on my torso or my, my arms and legs, so I typically will try to go for a pair of tights and make arm socks or go to We Love Colors and try to get most of my body covered so that I'm only having to paint maybe my bust up because painting from the neck up, for instance, to make sure it looks realistic can take up to two hours. Um, my friend, I'll go back here, we did her whole body and I believe it took us, there were two of us painting her, I did her front and her husband painted her back and it took us almost three hours. We also had to do tattoo work on her so that took more time. going to go ahead and move forward since the whole time I've been talking about sponge and brush versus airbrush. Most people are going to apply makeup with a sponge and when I say sponge you're going to think beauty blender or those little round discus squishy sponges that you find for makeup. Makeup sponges specifically. I'm not talking about like sea sponges. I'm talking about makeup sponges. Um, and while these are useful, the problem with makeup sponges is they absorb a lot of the material that you're using. So you're wasting a lot of your product because the sponge is absorbing it and taking it away from you. Um, a brush is better simply because you do get much more off of the, um, um, the brush itself. For instance, on the left here, the pink Twi'lek is makeup based, or sorry, oh, of course it's makeup based, <laughs> water based makeup. <laughs> And you can see there is some transfer here. She, every time she washes it, it comes off just fine because it's water-based. Um, but we applied this with a mixture of a sponge and a brush. I used the, sp the sponge just for the base layer to get her fully covered because it's fast and easy. And then I came in for the two other colors to make her hot pink. We had to use a pastel blue, a um, pastel orange, and a hot pink because hot pink isn't achieved with just one color. Everyone's skin tone is too different. So this is where I'm saying testing out your skin tone and trying to get different hues, you really have to determine what, what mats you out. And when we made her white, it made her hot pink a little too bright. So by mixing the um, pastel orange and pastel blue together, it muted out all the red in her face and allowed the pinkish purplish tone to show up more. And we did a sponge application for the base layer and then we used brush to get all of the layering and add more of a natural skin tone so it looked more like an airbrushed look. This, we only did her neck and face. We didn't even do her ears or anything. Just this section right here took almost an hour. Um, and she did her own beauty makeup, so technically probably an hour and a half. Now to the right, this is an airbrush. This only took me an hour. Um, you can see that it's very opaque, very dark. This is supposed to be very stark contrast and colors here. So the white had to be um, airbrushed onto me to make it dark enough um, to cover up my own skin tone as I'm a little bit rosy over my cheeks. Um, but typically 
getting this level of control with water-based makeup is hard because water-based makeup, if you push too hard, can bleed down your face. The airbrush is so nice for controlled looks for something that you need to apply quickly. Um, if you're doing a whole body makeup, then um, a base sponge or brush is great to start with, but then the airbrush really picks up the pace. Um, there are inexpensive airbrushes. I used a Pinkio airbrush um, from Amazon. It was only $49. It's travel size. It is air travel approved because the former airbrush that I had was an $80 master class airbrush set. And um, my, let's just say that my pump, my air pump looks like a bomb. So I could not travel with it. The Pinkio, which I will type in the comments, Pinkio airbrush is tiny, doesn't have any tubes or piping everywhere, only has three settings, but those three settings work. And um, as long as you make sure you get a proper mix for your airbrush, so if you're using water-based paint and an airbrush, you wanna make sure you have a water-based activator. And if you're using an alcohol base, you'll need to make sure you have either 99% alcohol or an approved activator for that particular brand. Most um, alcohol-based paints and water-based paints that our airbrush also come with or offer an activator to help thin out the paint when it starts to gunk up. But I prefer airbrush just because it's faster for me, more precise, I don't have to, I can draw lines, I can change the nozzles. Instead of having to have like a pack of 30 different brushes to paint myself, I just need one airbrush with like two little nozzles and that's it. But that's not for everybody. So understand that you will need to do some trial and error, but if you are going to apply, I suggest brush over sponge just because the sponge will soak up too much of your product. Let you guys look at my creepy face while I wait for questions. Okay. Oh, for the airbrush look. Um, so let me count. Um, so I have a one ounce bottle and I have applied this makeup look three times since purchasing this makeup. And I'm not even a quarter of the way through the one ounce bottle. <laughs> so very little. <laughs> You need very little, I, I'd say at worst case, maybe halfway through my alcohol-based paint, but I've applied this makeup look three times and I've done it. I've used it to mix with another look for a friend. So a one ounce bottle of alcohol-based paint can go anywhere from, if it's a heavy makeup look, 10 applications up to 25. And also, if you want to use your airbrush for makeup and a prop, please make sure you have a separate airbrush. You can use the same, you know, airbrush, like the same um, air pump. That's fine because it's just pushing air through things. But the head of the airbrush needs to be completely different. So you need to have one for body paint and one for props just because prop-based paint is not skin safe and you can never fully clean out prop based paint because it likes to stick to the inside of the needle even if you remove it and clean it. Um, so always make sure you have two separate heads. Now thankfully an airbrush itself, not the pump, not the air pump, but the airbrush itself is usually only anywhere from like 15 to 20 bucks tops. And I like to do what's called a gravity fed. So there's a little cup at the top of the airbrush that I pour um, product into and then I water or I use an activator to water it down. <laughs> I use an alcohol activator to thin it out a little bit. Um, there are also siphon feed airbrushes where there is a pot at the bottom and it sucks the product up. The only reason I don't like those is because you end up wasting product because it can never get the, the rest of it at the bottom of the, the pot. So the gravity fed forces all of the product through and makes sure that you use every single drop. I mean, for instance, to apply the look on the right, the Yojimbo look, I want to say that I used, maybe for the red, I used 15 drops of the red, uh, 10 drops of the white, and about five drops of the orange. And then I used an alcohol thinner 
to help it spread more over my face. And I powdered it. I do sometimes go in with a little bit of eyeshadow to add some shading, um, but yeah, uh, very little. You use very little makeup for, per application if you're applying it right. That's why I like to suggest starting with a cheaper brand of airbrush makeup, maybe Pro Air um, or um, like a tattoo art before you go for the more um, advanced methods so that once you get used to how to apply the makeup and how, to th how much to thin it out, you're not wasting expensive product. <laughs> Most people do like siphon brushes, but they just, they waste so much product when it comes to makeup because there's always gonna be like that last little like one eighth of an inch or less that you just can't suck out because your tube's like, it doesn't have enough pressure. <laughs> Again, to body-based makeup versus prop, make, uh, prop painting. Prop paint is a little bit heavier um, and easier to suck, or sorry, a little bit lighter and easier to set up, suck up, whereas um, body-based paint is actually a little bit heavier because it's, um, the hues and pigments added to it weigh it down and the silicone to make sure it stays stretchy over your skin. <laughs> but to each their own, if you prefer a siphon-based airbrush, please go ahead and keep using it. I just prefer gravity fed, um, simply because I feel like I get more bang for my buck. Um, okay, uh, so if we have any other questions, please go ahead and ask them, but I'm gonna go ahead and move forward. Uh, we're going to talk about liquid latex and collodion. So um, for this, I used both. So uh, this big, disgusting, ugly looking scar thing here is a mixture of um, liquid col uh, of collodion, which is, I don't, you can't put collodion very close to your eye. So it created a little grooves in my skin just above my eyebrow and just um, about like a quarter of an inch before my, below my eyelid that the scar would follow. And the scar is a mixture of scar wax and liquid latex that I then applied makeup over. And so you, with Kratos, he has a very raised, ugly scar. A lot of people, their scars are sunken in, which is why you would use rigid collodion. Rigid collodion, what it does is you apply a layer to a uh, very like fleshy part of your body. So something that's, that has a lot of uh, bounce. <laughs> For instance, your cheeks are pretty squishy, right? Now you don't want to get too close to your eye again because it produces an off gas that can, it can sting. <laughs> so don't go too close to your eye. But if you put it on your cheek and you just put one little streak and you let it sit there for about five minutes, you'll feel your skin start to tighten. And what it is doing is it's sucking your skin in and basically drying it out and creating a channel or a scar. And you, the more you layer it, the deeper that scar becomes. And you can put makeup over it and all of a sudden you have this really wicked scar for super cheap. I mean, Rigid Collodion um, is 10 to $12 uh, for like a little one ounce tube of it. And that one ounce tube goes a long way. You, you use very little for an awesome effect. Same thing with liquid latex. Um, you can get it for very cheap. You can mix it with cotton balls and stretch it over your face to make yourself look like a zombie, like your skin's peeling off. Or you can you know, use a little bit of scar wax and build up areas and use the liquid latex to seal over the scar wax because scar wax likes to stay mushy. Um, there are a lot of different uses for it. Now, the problem is both of these have high reaction re readings. So what I mean by that is if you're an individual that has sensitive skin, you need to test it on the underside of your arm first especially liquid latex. Um, it was here that I discovered I was sensitive to liquid latex above my collarbone. If I have liquid latex below my collarbone, anywhere below my collarbone, on my arms, my legs, my torso, I have no reaction. The second I put it on my neck or my face or my ears, I react. Now, the only reason I did not react this time was because the second time I applied it, instead of using liquid latex, I use um, a mixture of a Maron sealant and um, Prosade. And Prosade is a medical grade adhesive that you can use sort of like contact cement for your skin. So 
So you apply it on one side, you apply it on the prosthetic, you wait a couple, like about 30 seconds, and you stick it to your body and it's stuck, it's done. <laughs> Um, and, and you can also build it over with cotton and other things to kind of create this um, scar look uh, or to blend seams too. So, so um, prostate is really useful. But liquid latex, again, please test it on the underside of your arm, walk around, move around in it. Um, a lot of people have latex allergies and this is latex in its purest form. So we're talking about latex allergies. I have a friend that makes latex-free foam because she had so many people who wanted to be Twi'lex like her, but all the places that were selling Laku were only making them out of latex. And she realized there were people who really wanted to be aliens that couldn't, and they were tired of making them out of you know um, fabric or foam, and they wanted something that was better. So she sculpted a set of uh, Togruta Montrals, which are these creatures here on the, this creature here on the left, a Sokotano. Her um, headpiece, these are called um, Montrals and Laku. And then on the right, this is a Twi'lek, which is Darth Talon. And these are Laku as well. And these are made from latex free foam. So it's essentially like a, an expanding foam that you cure inside of a mold. And when you release it from that mold, it remains a little bit flexible. As you can see here, there's some buckling and stuff, but it's still squishy and it's latex free. You can also paint it with just about anything because it's um, not silicone. You can put like um, psycho paints on it, which are a mixture of prostaid and, um, and um, smooth on paints, or you can use acrylic or you can use liquid latex or liquid text, not liquid latex, liquid text. You can use liquid latex too. You can do that if you're not, you know, if you're not allergic to latex and you want to put it over a latex free foam, you, you can go for it. <laughs> Um, but you can pretty much paint it with anything, any sort of flexible paint, um, so that when you bend it like this, you know, acrylic would normally crack. If you mixed acrylic with like a fabric textile medium or some kind of a glue that was flexible, then that would probably work for you. Um, you could also use fabric paints too. I mean, there's a lot of different options here, but latex free foam is an option for individuals who want to go into more advanced work, who know how to sculpt and who know how to mold and are willing to cast their own prosthetics. Um, for those who aren't, Amber Bright Props makes them, and you can contact her through her website, um, which, which I believe is just amberbright.com. Um, there are also, there's also Twi'lek Pam, and she's on Etsy, and I believe it's called Twi'lek Pam Creations. She has multiple different alien creations, and she makes things out of silicone as well. So um we'll go ahead and move forward to silicone this is something i made myself here you can see the process i had a male mannequin head this is before i did my own head cast i learned my lesson do your own head cast if you're going to go into more advanced materials so that your mask fits your face exactly because i had to stuff this with cotton and other weird things to make it fit my tiny face this uh, male mannequin was much bigger than me um but i sculpted it out of monster clay which is a waxed based clay that you can heat up with a heat gun um, and apply texture to it, and it's very easy to smooth out with heat as well. And then I created a mold for it out of resin and something called Eurofill, which is a thickener for resin because silicone based um, castings cannot have what's called a soft mold inside of them. Usually when you think of molds in movies, you think about this big hard plaster exterior and then inside there's this weird soft squishy mold Silicone can't have that because it would adhere to the rubberized soft squishy mold, which is called the child. So there's the parent mold, which is the mother mold, the outside, and then the child inside is the soft. So I can only use the uh, mother mold, the outside hard shell, to make silicone based appliances. Um, and that meant that I was going to ruin this poor thing. So I knew um, I needed to sculpt it to the best of my ability um, and create a resin case casting on the outside and then I casted it uh, a resin mold and then casted it in silicone and this is platinum cure silicone you can get at a place called smooth on there are things there are stores called Reynolds materials across the United States and they offer lessons on how to create molds and casts um, silicone lasts for up to 15 to 20 years if you take good care of it it is very difficult to paint so my paint is cracking here on this particular prosthetic because I used airbrush paints 
when I should have used a silicone hybrid paint. Um, they were just very expensive at the time and I had already spent so much time on this that I uh, kind of cut corners. But I've learned my lesson and in the future I will be changing that. This is the very first time I've ever done anything like this and I will just say that this section right here alone, just making just making the masks like from sculpting to molding to casting and finally painting took me probably 50 hours. So it's a lot of work. <laughs> But it's worth it because you create this really realistic skin effect. And if you're trying to go for the gold in a competition, there you go. Also, it's really stretchy. So if you do like gain weight, guess what? It'll stretch over your face. <laughs> I'm okay, I'm gonna go back. <laughs> I'm gonna go this way. We're gonna keep moving forward. It's like, I, I, I realized how much time we're at and I wanna make sure I leave room for questions. There's so much information to give you guys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, so pre-made versus self-made special effects plants. You're probably wondering, why is there a picture of Sam from Thermal Cosplay sticking her tongue out? The photo That is a photographer known as Hinmake Productions in my home state. Um, and the reason that this is a pre-made appliance is those boobs are not mine. I am a very reluctant A cup. I am very small chested. I do not have breasts that large. Those are E cups. Those are silicone boobs that I put normal water-based makeup on and blended into my own skin tone so that, um, hey, I suddenly have enormous boobs. Um, <laughs> these appliances were made for drag queens and you can wear them like a t-shirt or kind of like an apron. There's different ways to go about it. If you look up silicone drag queen boot, uh, drag queen, oh wait, hang on. Silicone drag queen brace, breastplates. Yeah, yeah. Silicone drag queen breastplates. <laughs> there we go. Then you will find these. Um, I paid $160 for these and they will last, like I said, up to 15 years as long as I take good care of them. You do need to clean them regularly and um, they're pretty easy to wear. I just put a normal bra over them so that they squish in like breasts with a push-up bra and that's it. Um, I'm enhanced without having to go through surgery. <laughs> um, but there are a lot of different appliances that you can buy to enhance yourself in different ways. Um, there, you can do it for your biceps, you can use boob cutlets as biceps, um, you can add padding to your butt, to your waist if you want to look like thicker and more muscular. There's lots of different things you can do with silicone and foam to make your body look completely different. Um, and there, there's a lot available out there. So if you have questions, please message Thermal Cosplay on Facebook or through thermalcosplay.com and I can go into more detail because this is a very big subject. <laughs> um, another self-made special effects appliances. Now a special effects appliance doesn't have to be overly complicated. You could also just take a little mask you know, like a ski mask, throw on some um, sunglasses, paint those sunglasses where you still have enough room to see through them, and then use some furniture foam and wood grain and fake grass and make yourself into baby group. So you don't have to, a lot of people think of special effects makeup and appliances as something that's really difficult to do. Sometimes it's just faking it till you make it. Um, this is my mom as baby group, and I am Mantis. Um, for her antenna, I used the um, friendly plastic, which is little plastic beads that you put into warm water, and I sculpted them over um, armature wire so that they would hold their shape, let them completely cure, uh, sealed them with a coat of wood glue, and then painted them. And there you go. I have Mantis's antenna. I intended to add lights, and then the place I was going to buy lights from uh, disappeared, so now I'm still trying to find the little tiny remote activated light that I'm missing so much. <laughs> Um, but you don't have to always go big. Sometimes something really small like a set of ears or fangs or a fake eyebrow can just change your appearance drastically. All right, so we have finally, okay, good. I, I left room for questions because it's like, oh my gosh, we're getting to like eight minutes before I have to stop. And I'm like, no. <laughs> um, so 
This is definitely the time where you can ask some questions, um, anything that maybe I haven't covered, um, anything that I went over too fast that you'd like me to go back to, please let me know. Um, if you have questions that are too complicated for me to answer here in this medium, I would be happy to speak to you. You can reach out to me at www.thermocosplay, T-H-E-R-M-O-C-O-S-P-L-A-Y.com. And you can also just email thermocosplay at gmail.com. And we'd be happy to answer your questions. It might take us 24 to 48 hours, but we try really hard to share as much knowledge as we can on this subject because we know it's very daunting. While we are sitting here waiting for questions, I'm just gonna go right back to the beginning and we'll just do a quick once over. So I don't, I, I did not do a panel on plus size cosplay. That may have been uh, one of the other presenters um, there have been a lot of presentations today, um, but uh, Maron is, um, I started using Maron because I, I actually have friends that were theater majors that suggested it to me. <laughs> so inadvertently, yes, theater majors did introduce me to Maron, <laughs> um, but uh, I, um, I myself was not in theater. I've done competitions a lot, but I haven't been in theater itself. However, my friend did introduce me, so it would be their fault. That's why I know Maron. That and because I went to a special effects makeup panel at a convention in California one time and they mentioned it and it was like the only useful thing they mentioned and I was like, huh, it stuck with me. <laughs> All right, so uh, what, what was my favorite piece to do? Oh gosh, my favorite costume to do for like special effects makeup? Uh, okay, so yeah, it's gonna have to be Thancreos, even though it was so much work, even though just to put on the mask because it covers my, my whole, the whole of back of my neck and my all of my ears and my nose. I mean, it took me like, almost two hours every time to get into, it's still my favorite just because I have not met a single other person that has done this character. And I love this character so much and his storyline in the Mass Effect series like devastates me, but he's my favorite. So I would have to say that Thane Krios is probably my favorite special effects makeup piece that I've done so far. However, I am working on a um, specialized version of Tamatoa from Moana for a competition later this year and some of the makeup that I have planned for that might beat this out just because I literally have to hand rhinestone myself every time. <laughs> Uh, I believe it's Mama Jane, but no problem. Don't worry about it. Uh, I've actually been told I have one of those voices too that sounds like everybody. So I kind of wonder if maybe my inflection or something makes me sound like other people. <laughs> and thank you for sus subscribing, by the way. I appreciate it. Um, I'm just a big nerd here. It's fine. We're all big nerds. It's the best part of living out here in the world. Or in here in the world. I don't know. You know, wherever you are. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna go, go to this. I also really like Kratos, even though he's pretty simple. Like what I consider simple, because I've done some, I've helped people with some really complicated makeups, but I like Kratos too. Yes, Nerds for Life. I completely agree with you on that. Um, nerds for Life is magic. Yeah. So we still have three minutes left. Um, some of the things I'll go over is 
if you're doing cream or grease based makeup please don't just go with the Halloween based makeup please at least use something that's a bit more special go to cosplaysupplies.com and check out their cool makeup section and at least get good theater quality makeup if it's going to be cream and grease <laughs> um, if it's water based I really highly recommend recommend Maron or Paradise AQ which is by Maron just because they're really 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 good um, and for alcohol-based paint makeup, I highly recommend Endura Paints or Real Creations. Real Creations is super expensive, but holy smokes, their paint lasts a really long time. All right. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so that's a good point, Von So one of these days I will do costume that uses makeup, but most of the time I do armor. Yeah, using... Using makeup is daunting just because you have to think about the fact of where am I located? How long will this last? Is it going to be hot or cold outside? Is it going to be dry or moist outside? Am I going to have to reapply while I'm, while I'm at the convention? Can I eat? Can I drink? There's just so many questions you have to ask. You know, can I hug people? Do I have to keep them at arm's reach because I know I might have some transfer? There's, yeah, wearing makeup is definitely a lot of a thought process um, and so I can see why a lot of people tend to just go with you know basic basic looks like really really simple um, and avoid more complicated special effects pieces also for instance my Leku um, so this one here the blue one right here uh, that silicone headpiece weighs about three two and a half to three pounds which doesn't sound like a lot but imagine that being your head's already on your neck and then you add about another three pounds and it's pulling your head back um, that's why most um, Twi'lek cosplayers have a head wrap it's to help with supporting the weight of their headpiece um, and that's where like my friend with her latex free foam is really nice because they're super lightweight So we are up, time is up, it is now 7.30, and I must sadly bid you all adieu. My name is Sam from Thermo Cosplay. You can find me on www.thermocosplay.com. I have had the greatest pleasure talking to all of you today about special effects makeup, and I hope to see you sometime in the future. Thank you very much for coming to um, my special effects panel. Have a good night.